All right, welcome back to the Dr. Jimbo Love Show featuring my main man right over here, Seth Matthew. Everybody. We are here in Denver on a very, very hot, sweltery day. Ooh, it's high a of, steamy one. Hot of high of 98 today. Um, Seth was opening up the the doors down below, and I was like, uh oh, it's like a blast furnace out there. Mm -hmm. furnace out there. But don't worry, we're cranking the air conditioning too to try to offset it. Yeah, yeah, it's nice up here. We are in the mezzanine section here at the shops of Northfield at Brothers Bar and Grill. Feel free to come down. We've got some people waiting in line downstairs right now, it looks like. And we will let them up here in just a moment once we open the restaurants. Today's show, all right, NHL playoffs. Of course, we're going to talk about our avalanche. Yep. Uh, NBA finals, we have a series, folks. Two to two. Um, I'm telling you, Golden State looked really good in Boston last night and pulled off um, a Steph Curry beautiful performance. Yeah, and he was borderline injured for this game. I, I was talking to one of my coworkers being like, hey, for sports betting, should we bet on Steph Curry, like missing all of his stats because they said he's injured? And they, they said to me, no, he's probably, as soon as we bet all the unders, he's gonna go off. And you know, he had a heck of a game last he night. Did. He had a double-double, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, we've got the LIV golf tournament, the Saudi tournament. It is not a distraction anymore, okay? They are starting to pull big name players and uh, there's a lot of controversy with the PGA. And of course, they're using some different narratives to uh, kind of suppress why people are going over there. But when it really comes down to it, it's less work for more money. Yeah, why not? You know, and, and some of these lower guys, some of these people that, that really are untouched, um, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment, but uh, Dustin Johnson being one, um, you know, he's got a master's exemption. So he basically, in a sense, quit the PGA or said he's going to turn in his PGA card. He's an, an exception. I mean, he's one of the top players in the world. He's a draw. And, it, and for him, it's not going to hurt him as yeah. much. So uh, Woods has announced that he will not play in the U.S. Open next week. That starts on the 16th. So unfortunately, we won't be graced with uh, Tiger's presence in the U.S. Open this season. Which I think it, it's a good call for him. I mean, we, we were all excited to see him back. But at the end of the day, he was getting through day one, day two, and he just didn't look like he had the full health to make it through day three and four. So hopefully a little rest. Uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing him here in a couple months. Yeah. So Well, he, it'll be interesting because he still hasn't announced for the British Open, which takes place in July. Mm -hmm. So remember, that's our last major of the year. And I really look for Tiger to probably just play majors at this point and then a couple select tune-ups maybe some Ryder Cup if he's the coach or something like that. But I don't think we're going to see Tiger playing regular golf on the tour ever again. No, and I think what, what he should start looking into and what ESPN and all those other guys should really look into is we've seen the success of the match. It's a fun, easygoing thing. He can play with other big golfers. Uh, they can joke around. He can do. They can cross-platform some uh, sports. You can get a couple NBA guys in there. You can do NFL uh, like they did this last time. Uh, we haven't seen baseball yet, so maybe get some baseball players in there. Uh, all these pro athletes are decent golfers. Yep. And so I, I think it would be really fun to see, you know, a little bit more lighthearted. There's still money to be had, and it would be a good exposure for golf. I agree. And, you know, back if you go way back into the 30s, the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and even into the 50s, exhibition golf is what they called it back then, mm -hmm. was really the main thing. Now, there was the PGA. The PGA has been around since 1916. But they, they would have these people travel um, across the country and they would play. Um, the movie Legend of Bagger Vance is mm -hmm. kind of a, brings a, kind of a, a situation where you would have the celebrity golfers play against each other in kind of just like we said, you know, two twosomes um, and just compete that level. And maybe we'll see more of that. Yeah, and it gives you behind the scenes look. I mean, they're fun, they're joking around. It, it, it's great for an audience. Uh, I haven't looked at the numbers yet. We'll have to do that on the next show. But I got to say, the match has got to be one of the most watched things because everybody looks forward to it because it's so fun and lighthearted, and they really engage the audience in that one. Yeah, and there might, you know, what an advantage we have now with the technology because they're mic'd up. You can really hear them kind of joking and, and going back and forth, just like a regular foursome would be like us on the course mm -hmm. on the weekends. Um, the Sparks fire. They're not only their coach, but their GM as well, 
12 games into the season. They were five and seven. So maybe that's a little early. Uh, we want to sh give a shout out to Diana Taurasi. It's her 40th birthday. People don't realize this, but Diana Taurasi, I didn't realize she was 40. No. But I she, still remember watching her play at UConn. Yes, so did I. So did I. And she's been really a model of, of just consistency and greatness. Um, she is 40 years old. She has no uh, plans to retire. So we really have to start drawing some comparisons between her and Tom Brady. Yeah. Because people that can perform at that level in the 40s is such a very rare thing. Um, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, unfortunately, the U.S. Uh, the New York Times did a little article deep dive into some of these allegations that he has been facing, and they are now up to 66 massage therapists. My wife's a massage therapist. I'm going to chime in a little bit on what, what she has to go through if she's solicited in, in any way uh, for any kind of, uh, it's not a sexual act, but just a, more of an off-color type situation when you she's involved in massage mm -hmm. and she had a couple instances with a couple former nuggets I'm gonna mention one of the guys names Calvin Nat because we had some issues with him and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that and how my wife handled it uh, rugby challenge yep big rugby tournament in Denver um, at Infinity Park both today this weekend and next weekend we're gonna talk a little bit about the details we've got teams from North America and South America yep and this is rugby union so it's gonna be I believe this is the 15 on 15 tournament, uh, it's Union, uh, because we also do have in July 4th, they always play the American tournament, or the U.S. tournament, where all the countries from around the world come and play sevens in Vegas. Uh, USA has been fortunate to at least win one of those. Uh, we've been doing uh, very well in that, but you know, Rugby Union, it's so weird with rugby. The top five teams are so dominant, mm -hmm. and then you go five, uh, six through 10, and there is a huge drop off. Are you in, talking about the the top five teams in the United States? No, top five teams in the in, world. In the world. Okay. There's such a huge drop off in town. So that's why I like these smaller teams because they're uh, when you do city teams or, that come from other countries, it's more comparable than what it is when you play national. Interesting. Now you played rugby. Tell I us did. a little bit about your experience playing rugby and what levels did you get to? Yeah, so I played in Minnesota for quite a while. I played on the Minnesota select side in college and then I came out here and played for Glendale for one year. And it was a little bit, little bit more serious than I was used to because rugby is a fun game. I mean, you can right. play at so many different levels. Uh, everybody is so intense, but after the game, you're having beers together at the end, and ev everyone's really friendly. And so it's just a really good camaraderie to meet new people and hang out. Awesome. Now, you played at Infinity Park then. Yes, I did. Right on. And that's our premier facility. It's one of the premier facilities in the nation, according to a lot of rugby you know, aficionados out there. Mm -hmm. So, but let's talk about the NHL right now. And the first thing we want to talk about is right here, our Denver, Ava our Colorado Avalanche are going to the cup. They are a force of nature. Yeah. According to the Denver Post. It, and I know a lot of people are really excited. A lot of people are finally coming out for the Avs games and really supporting the team. Unfortunately, we do have a couple of injuries. So I, it'll be interesting to how that plays in effect. But the good news for the Avalanche as we played the least amount of games to get to the cup, more than the uh, less than the other two teams, so we'll have a little bit more rest on our side. Kadri's a question mark, but you know he's going to try to come back from a broken hand that happened in the last series. But right now, there's huge question marks around him. Yeah, we were kind of talking about that. Are they maybe they can do something with his thumb and just tape his hand to the stick? <laughs> you know, maybe I don't know. It's going to be it's, and we have we figured out which hand it is. Is it his dominant hand? I haven't looked to see what you know? if it's his dominant or non-dominant. But anytime you have a hand injury with stick handling, taking slap shots, taking wrist shots, it's a lot of hand motions. Um, so in gripping of the stick, it's a big thing. If people remember the kids' movie Mighty Ducks, mm -hmm. Banks got injured, injured his hand, and he wasn't allowed back on the team until he could hold the stick in his hand and rotate it. Yeah. Um, remember so, that's with kids though. So, yeah. You know, adults they can make their own decisions. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be able to play. But uh, Seth is very correct. We have only played 14 playoff games. Okay. We are 12 and two in the playoffs. The Lightning they project will play anywhere closer to 17 games, and the Rangers will have played. 19 games going into the cup so our legs are going to be a lot fresher the question is is are we going to have the same hangover that the, the Tampa Bay uh, Lightning had you know with their first two games against the Rangers they didn't look like the same team as uh, as they do and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into the Tampa Bay Rangers series 
Uh, the Abs are 7-0 and on the road. That ties the 98-99 team. Um, they've had eight comeback wins when they've been trailing by one nothing. So they're the comeback kids. Really what we got to hope now is that they're simulating game time situations for the goalies in order for us to not have that lag like Tampa Bay had. Yeah, and I mean, goaltending is a big question mark for us. Uh, we don't have bad goalies, but right now in the Rangers and Tampa series, you have two of the best goalies, and uh, we're going to have to run into that. It's going to be interesting to see without Kadri putting his big body in front of the goalie and making it so the goalie can't see the puck clearly. Uh, how are we going to score on these guys? Because, you know, they've been playing lights out. Uh, the last score of the game was 3-1. to one. Two of those goals were scored in the last two minutes for the Rangers in Tampa, so... I mean, anything can happen in these series. Exactly, and that brings us perfectly to the Rangers Lightning series, which, as Seth predicted, the Sage Seth over here, they have won three straight. Remember last week we talked about him being down two zip to the Rangers, and Seth said, "I fully expect them to win the next two ball games." Well, they did better than that; they won the next three. So we've got uh, game three was basically uh, it looks like a 3-2 to two Tampa Bay and yep. then game 4 was 4-1 four, and just as Seth was saying the last two goals that were scored because it was 1-1 one, one going into the third period late yep. um, and then Tampa Bay ends up getting two goals right at the end um, the shots on goal I mean really even uh, you had Tampa Bay who had 26 shots on goal and you had New York Rangers who had 25 shots on goal yeah, and I think the big thing here is, and I feel bad for the Rangers, when you go to seven-game series every single time, we got to remember Tampa Bay got that sweep. They're, New York's running out of gas. Right. I, I don't think they even have enough to get through this next game. Uh, they are playing really well. They're a very young team, and I think we're going to see the Rangers be a force on years to come. But right now, they're, they're just getting run down. I mean, when yeah. you play seven games, seven games, and now you're, if you win tonight, you're going to another seven games. By the end of this, you could be... 21 games in while the other teams only played 15 or 14 and they're sitting just rested. Exactly. Exactly. Now the one advantage we'll have to see if Tampa Bay does win this and, and everyone pretty much expects them to. What do you think? Do we want to see, I mean, if we had our choice, would we want to see the Rangers or would we want to see the Lightning? If we had our choice, we would want to see the Rangers just because of the amount of games they played. Uh, right now, I think the Rangers are showing there's not a huge difference in talents between the two teams. They both have great goalies. Shots are pretty even every single game. Uh, but, you know, I'd rather see the team that's played the most games uh, just because I think fatigue will play in a factor. Because like you said, they started out, they surprised us, they won their home games, they were up 2-0. But, you know, fatigue's starting to kick in, and that Tampa Bay has a lot more legs under them right now. Right, right. Um, tickets. I know you're looking. I, you, you've got I some got tickets some. already for the Stanley Cup, and we're not going to talk. I don't want Seth to have to disclose but he paid a pretty good yeah. amount, and uh, but he's going. You're yep. gonna be there. And yeah. you and Shy and then two other people will be there. So you guys all bought, you had four tickets together, right? Uh, we ended up getting five. Okay. But no, I mean, at this point, you got, especially if you're a true fan of the Colorado Avalanche, it's been 20 years since we've been there. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't know, so many things could go wrong. We could go into, let's say we win the cup this year. We could definitely, not make it next year because we could have if McKinnon goes down, McCarr goes down, uh, it, bad timing of injuries, anything can happen. So I mean, everything has to go right for you to make it back to the Cup. And yeah, I think sure. it's crazy we're about to see Tampa Bay most likely get right. there three straight times, which is unheard of. That really is crazy, considering how much you have to go through for the length of the season and then the playoff schedule. You you have seven game series, mm -hmm. and what is it? Is it two? It's is it two series to get to the finals? Yeah, you got to win two series to get to the finals. So you could play technically 21 more games of, of hockey. It comes out to be 28. 28 Because it starts with eight, then it goes to four, then to two, and then you get to the championship. One, two, three. So you've got to do three, just three to seven game series just to get to the cup final. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's, that's a lot of work and a lot of stuff can happen. And as we've seen with Colorado Avalanche, we've had two very critical injuries yeah and then you I mean you look at it, hopefully Kemper comes back but you go back to that St. Louis team they're rocking and rolling they beat the wild who I thought were the better team and then all of a sudden their goalie goes down and they, they just start falling apart uh, you just can't help injuries uh, it's a fast-paced game it's a physical game 
Uh, it, it's unfortunate that they happen, but that costs you for the season. So. Uh, well, we saw Kemper, you know, almost be taken out for who knows. He almost lost an eye. Yeah. So, you know, and I, what I've heard, and, and, and again, we, they probably won't say anything right up till the end, but Kemper is probably going to be the goalie that they're going to bring him back. You're going to go with the one yeah. that brought you there. Because even though Frankie had a great series, at the end of the day, the team played better for him. Right. Uh, well, it, he gave it, up five goals in his last game. Mm -hmm. so. But if he would, if they would have played like that for Kemper, he probably doesn't give up as many goals. But I think the team recognized, hey, they had a little bit more of a deficit in goal. Frankie's a great goalie, but he does give up some rebounds, and we just played better defense. And we're going to have to in this next series. It's going to take everyone to get through, especially our young guys, especially the new additions that Joe Sackick brought on the team. It's going to take every single person to get the cup to raise it above our heads. Yeah, I agree. And I think because there's been so much talk about this layoff and we have a direct correlation of, of watching what happened with Tampa Bay, I think you're going to see that our Avalanche are ready to play. Mm -hmm. Not to mention they're going to be playing on their home ice to start the thing. Now, the cup starts either Thursday or it will start, and that is if, if Tampa Bay closes it out in the next game, um, it will start Thursday here in Denver. If not, it will start on Saturday. So make note of that. Yeah, we'll find out today how the Rangers, get, if they can squeak one out, they get to go home. Rangers have an impeccable record at home, have only dropped one, I believe only one home game, or yeah, one home game, which was this series, um, th this entire time, which is just crazy how different we are than them because we're undefeated on the road. We've, we've lost two at home, uh, but typically we take care of home ice. And this team just, they take care of home ice, but they can't buy a win on the road. Uh, it's taken some game sevens to win that last one to eliminate their opponent. Yep, absolutely. Well, good, let's shift gears a little bit to the NBA. And uh, Seth, we've got ourselves a series. Oh, we saw it coming. I mean, it is just something else. Uh, the, the, the series between uh, Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics is tied up. A little bit, just to bring you up to date, uh, game three was Wednesday night, and the Celtics won 116-100 to 100 at, at, in Boston. Uh, Tatum, Brown, and Smart had 26, 27, and 24 points, uh, respectfully, and they played a good game. Curry, again, 31 points. Thompson, 25 points. The big story was, was Green. He played 35 minutes. He only had two points, four rebounds, and three assists, which is not a typical outing for Green. Now, understand he is the defensive force, yep. but he just didn't look like himself, and there was even questions of the, of the next game, game four, of him sitting out a little bit, which he did. Yeah, um, it, there, there was a scary moment in this game where Steph Curry and Al Horford, now people remember right, earlier this season, Steph Curry did get injured against the Boston Celtics going for a loose ball. Well, same thing happened in game three. Uh, they both went for the ball, Al Horford took a dive, and uh, Steph Curry's leg got a little bit under him. Yes, and So he was a little question mark for game four, but as we saw last night, no issues. Well, that was, a, that was an interesting series that happened because Horford was just trying to defend him. And basically, there's a rule in the uh, in the NBA where you've got to give a player an area for them to land. And what happened was Horford's leg kind of stuck forward, and Seth Curry luckily avoided a turned ankle. You can tell that Seth has turned a lot of ankles in his day because he actually started to roll it one way and then threw his body back and ended up saving himself from rolling an ankle. As an ex-basketball player, I'm telling you, um, I see that, I start to see it go, and it makes me just cringe because I can feel the pain going up my ankle from watching it. So good good for Seth Curry. Game four, which was last night, was a thriller. Uh, Golden State ended up pulling it out 107-97 against the Celtics. It was the S Steph Curry show. Yeah, and it really came down to the last two minutes. It was back and forth, I believe, at one point we were like 97-97. Yep. It wasn't until those last two minutes that Golden State's uh, started hitting some threes and really started to pull away a little bit at the end there. Yeah, unfortunately what happened is, as I counted, the last six possessions for Boston, they came down, they had a shot clock violation, and then they were shooting these three-pointers and not taking the ball to the hole, um, and they were missing, and, and, and uh, Golden State was making theirs. Um, Seth Curry ended up with 43 points, 10 rebounds, 4 assists. He was 7 for 14 from the three-point line. Uh, Thompson had 18 points. Green 
You know, he came back. He had a better game. I mean, he was tough. He was such a factor down the stretch because he's such a great defensive player. He ended up only with two points, but he had eight assists and nine rebounds. Poole, 14, and Wiggins had 17 points. Boston, again, you have, you know, you're, there are four main guys, Tatum, Brown, Smart, White, 23 points for Tatum, 11 rebounds, 6 assists, Brown 21 points, Smart 18, and White 16 points. Yeah, I would have expected Tatum to play more like Steph Curry. He's really got to take over this series if yeah. Boston's going to take this. You need your superstars to shine. Uh, they had a great balanced attack, but, you know, coming down that last two minutes, I would have liked to see Tatum with the ball a little bit more, and... Have him be the one. If you're going to lose, lose with your best player. Right. And I see you see a little bit of a t uh, kind of, uh, you know, with Tatum, he'll usually try to do kind of a little set up, a little shake and bake, and try to get in and, 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 and uh, initiate a shot. He, he was just settling for three-pointers in that last two minutes. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, his weren't going down, and Golden State's were. Um, really, shot selections is the, the biggest thing that I saw in the last six possessions that really swung swung the game in Golden State's favor. Yeah, and now you got to remember, we're going back to Golden State. Everything is tilting towards Golden State's favor. They now have home court advantage back. Yep, it's and a three-game series. Three-game series. Anything can happen. Monday night, folks, tune in, 6, 6 p.m., and you'll be seeing some of the best basketball on this planet. Excellent. Well, let's move over to golf. And one thing about the golf is we've got a rival league now. Yep. Okay, this LIV, they call it, some people call it the Live, I just call it the LIV Saudi League versus the PGA Tour. Now, before I get into this, I do want to just say something that I made a mistake last week uh, pronouncing a very, very great softball player from OU, uh, Jocelyn. Her name is Alo, not mm -hmm. Alto. Yep. <laughs> so I apologize. She has been blowing up my Twitter telling me that I mispronounced her name, so I apologize to you. Just kidding. <laughs> I wish. Um, but she ends up with 122 home runs this season, okay? In the past, if someone had over 80 home runs, that was unheard of. Yep. So she has completely blown the, the ceiling off of what a home run hitter is. Not only that, but she had the second best batting average at 515. 515, that means half the time she gets up, she hits safely. Yeah, and I mean, um, I'm surprised that pitch, uh, pitchers don't avoid her. At some point, uh, remember back, I know it was a steroid issue, but Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, Mike McGuire, people would pitch around these guys. College, they refused to pitch around her. No, I and, know, I can't figure that out either. And they got lit up for it. I mean, OU set the record for most home runs in a College World Series uh, championship. Yep. And... You know what? They, they had a tough series against Texas. Texas was very angry. I believe there's a video of their coach flipping off the cameras or something. It uh, went to a game, too. It took two games to win the national championship, but they did beat Texas, and it was their sixth NCAA championship in program history. Yeah, back-to-back -back for this one. Very good, you know, and uh, I, I was really happy to watch Jocelyn play. She is everything that they said and more. Mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the golf again. This LIV Saudi tournament is not just a distraction anymore. It is now starting to pull some of our well-known golfers away from it. Dustin Johnson announced that he quits the PGA Tour. He wants a part of the $25 million and it's and now it's been set. Each of these tournaments are going to have a total purse of $25 million. Remember, we just had a major last week, yep. or two weeks ago, where our purse for the PGA was only $12 million. So you're making twice as much money, and you're only playing 54 holes. Yeah. Um, and the PGA is pushing back pretty hard. Um, Graham McDowell had some things to say, and, and again, we'll, we'll kind of just look at one of his quotes. Um, Graham McDowell, he's a, a, an English or Scottish golfer. He's a UK golfer. And basically, if you remember, he won the US Open back in 2010 and also was part of that uh, Ryder Cup victory team back then. He says, I, I really feel like golf is a force of good in the world. I just try to, to be a great role model to kids. We are not politicians. He goes on further to say, as golfers, if we try to cure geopolitical situations in every country in the world that we play golf in, we wouldn't play a lot of golf. Yeah. So again, the PGA Tour is trying to protect their brand. I understand, but they are using 
um, some of the things. And basically what it is, it was the murder of a journalist called Jamal Khashoggi. And he is a U.S.-based Saudi citizen journalist who was, a lot of people think that it was tied directly to Mohammed bin Salman, who is the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. So it'd be kind of like if Joe Biden had been involved in something, our president, involved in, in ordering a murder. Mm -hmm. So it is a big deal. Um, there are also many women's issues in Saudi Arabia, which, uh, you know, they treat women over there really horribly. And the LGBTQ community, again, you can be put to death over there for just being gay. So for those reasons, you know, it, it, it doesn't really bode well for a lot of these people and their brands to be playing over there. But again, what does it come down to? The free market and the market drives the money. People will flock to where the money is. Yeah, it's kind of forcing PJ's hand. I mean, uh, I know we've had sports in the past that were nonprofits, and I read a thing that I believe the PGA Tour is also a listed as a nonprofit. So they can't really raise their how much they pay per thing. Uh, a lot of their money uh, they save because they don't have to pay as much taxes, uh, if any at all. And the Saudi tournaments all money being generated by the people that are running it. We've seen that in other leagues in the past where they had to get off this status to pay the players so that way they could keep their league intact. So the PJ is going to have to step up. They may have to lose that status and you know they're going to have to at least match yeah. uh, what the LIB tour is paying. Exactly. And you know, I mean, the the, the big criticism is this Mohammed bin Sal Salman, the crown prince, he's the principal source of the money. And that's again why it comes back to him and, and his possible murder of a journalist. Um, the U.S. Open, thank God, the U.S. Open, it starts next week, okay, June 16th. The U.S. Open is the purest golf tournament in the world. Anybody, Seth or I, could go out and just get a USGA card, get our gin number, and we could play the qualifying tournaments, much like in Tin Cup, Roy McAvoy did Kevin Costner's character mm -hmm. and you can qualify for the US Open as long as you win the regional things well the US Open is has a hundred fifty six player field and they have said that anybody they don't care what your status is with the PGA will be welcome to play in their tournament and that's refreshing yeah so all right let's uh, let's move on to uh, Deshaun Watson yep and we did a show where we talked about Deshaun Watson and we talked about these massage therapists that have come out and uh, accused him of, of wrongdoing. Although, I do want to make this very clear, and Seth and I have talked about this, is you are innocent until proven guilty. Okay, the, the uh, court of public sentiment does not fly on this show. And we've had two grand juries, not just one, but two grand juries in Texas that have declined to, to form any kind of criminal violations versus Deshaun. Um, the New York Times got involved a little bit here, and uh, you know I will read a quote here from one of the women in this thing. One woman who did not sue or complain, she's not one of the 24, so she's one of the 66 that's not involved in any of these cases yet. Uh, she complained, or she has not complained to police, told the Times that she was persistent, uh, Deshaun was uh, consistent in his request for sexual acts during their massage, including begging her to put her mouth on his penis. Now, my wife's a massage therapist and there's all kind of crazy kind of uh, uh, solicitations that happen sometimes along the way. Um, there was a gentleman who played for the Nuggets who, who did solicit my wife a little bit and of course she had to do it. As a massage therapist, you're trained and, and you're told how to deal with these things. And my wife just, you know, just says, I don't do that. And then that's exactly what this lady said as well. And that's usually what the, the cause, you know, usually what happens if you're a massage therapist, you just say, hey, look, it's not that kind of massage. So there are 24 other women that are still involved in this. And I think you're gonna end up seeing a lot of civil cases because of the amount of money that he has signed for this contract. Yeah, and he almost got it paid off. He needed to pay, he tried to pay off uh, 22 of them, 20 were gonna accept, but two did not, so he ended up not paying. Um, I think what's really coming out here is something I thought all along. The Houston Texans have a role in this. Uh, whether they're the ones that set it up or whatever, uh, there's cameras in this thing that, that there is gotta be some sort of trail. 
Now, it wasn't until Deshaun Watson wanted to leave that all of a sudden things started going sideways. Yeah, that's an interesting caveat to this whole situation. And so I do think that if Deshaun Watson's guilty, at some point the Houston Texans have to be held accountable because they played a role in this as well. Right. But it doesn't seem like he did anything criminally. You mm -hmm. know, su suggesting and making uh, solicitations to a massage therapist is not making them or forcing them to have sex. Mm -hmm. um, it is scummy and it's terrible and if, and if these allegations are true and and of course you know with as many as we have maybe he did say some off-color things to these massage therapists maybe he made them feel uncomfortable we don't know but none of the acts that he did were considered by the grand jury um, a criminal offense mm -hmm. now the civil case is just like in the oj simpson trial you see that the civil court is a lot different and uh he may end up pay, paying out a lot of money. And the fact that he offered, what was it, $100,000 yep. to 22 of the of these therapists, and then, 20, then two more popped up. So, you know, if he starts paying off these therapists, you're going to watch these other 66, or the 66 minus 24, other therapists maybe try to get involved with trying to get some money as well. Yeah. And you can't blame them. No. Yeah. You know, if, if indeed, indeed he did say stuff that was off color. Again, folks, when you're out getting massaged, please be professional. They're professional. Be professional. Don't be one of those guys. You know, it's the guy who has to put his hands on, on, on a, a woman when he's in a strip club or a guy who has to touch somebody. Let the women be. Remember, okay, we all have mothers and sisters out there. So let's treat the women with respect that they deserve. All right. Rugby. Yep. And we talked a little bit about it. And we've got a huge thing going on right here in Denver, which is going to be really cool. Um, it's called the Challenge of the Americas International. Today at an Infinity Park, which is down in Glendale, gates open at 12, so it's starting in probably about 20 minutes. It's only 10 bucks, folks, to get in. And guess what? Any kid under 12 is free. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity to go down and be able to see teams from North and South America. The 1 o'clock game puts the American Raptors versus the Jaguar 15. Is that, is that correct? Yep. And then the 330 games, you get to be able to see two of them back to back for 10 bucks, five bucks a piece. Vancouver Ravens versus Penarol out of Argentina. Next week, they do it again. The teams just switch and they'll play again next week, and it's the same situation. Yeah, and the, the Raptors are really behind like the leagues in the America where we didn't have a professional league up until probably, I would say, 10, 12 years ago. 15, it said 15, 15 years it's a 15 ago. season. Yep. And so they ended up bringing, uh, bringing professional rugby to America. We needed it for a farm team because USA is slowly getting more and more competitive with these other nations. And the, the Raptors kind of led the way on this one. And if you look at our team, not many American players on them, but a few. Right. Uh, but mo mostly they come from overseas and they give us better competition. They're exposing the sport. And we're starting to see now more and more high schools are now adding rugby teams. We're seeing NFL teams uh, enlisting the help of rugby teams on how to tackle safely. Because as much as this game is intense and they tackle without pads, they are trained to tackle the correct way so you uh, limit the injuries. Because without pads and people running full bore at each other, there could be a lot of injuries in this game. And it, uh, right now they, they do it the right way. Yeah. Now you suffered an injury. Yes, I ended up uh, having to have knee surgery because uh, at the time I was running and we ran into each other and a guy came from the side and my leg buckled in. So ended up kind of, I played I think a year or two after that and then I realized, you know. So it's, it, it effectively ended your career yeah. sports wise because you were playing soccer and rugby. And, and you, a little bit of hockey. And a little bit of hockey too, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well. Um, so the American Raptors are the American team. Is it an all-star team or is it, where, where are they based out of? Do you have any idea? So the Raptors are out of Glendale, but they, oh, they I are. haven't okay. looked at their... So this uh, is the team you play for? Yes. Okay. And I haven't looked at to see if this is a com combination team or whatnot, because we do have the Glendale Raptors that play professionally. I, uh, they, they could have easily done a little mini USA team to put them together uh, enlisting the help of some of the other professional teams such as like Seattle mm -hmm. uh, who has a very good rugby club as well. 
and we'll cover this next week too. We'll do, we'll do we'll break down both of these games. We'll let Seth give us some of his, of his uh, good local knowledge about uh, the game and how it's played and what the statistics are. Yeah. Because honestly, I've never even covered a rugby match. I don't even know what you look for. Um, I watch rugby. I, I enjoy it just like I enjoy Australian rules football. Um, that was one of my favorite things watching back when ESPN was really young mm -hmm. and uh, we'd come home from school back in the 80s that that was what was on yep Australian rules football you know this you know how they do this thing well, when they score well it'll be interesting to see how, how it turns out because a lot of these especially when we play international teams like this one coming from Argentina it is all decided in the pack play uh, the packs are the big guys on the field and if you have a great pack uh, you keep possession a majority of the game. So we'll just see how we end up match up against these other uh, countries' teams. Well, good. It'll be interesting. And we'll talk a little bit, like I said, next week. We'll, we'll highlight the two games from this weekend, and we'll also talk a little bit about next week's games as well. Because, again, folks, it's going to be there at Infinity Park, uh, which is just right down in Glendale, right in the center of Denver. Um, baseball. we got to talk about the boys of summer just a bit. Yep. You know, um, let's start out with just our poor Rockies. And just like, you know, I don't like to be a Debbie Downer, you know, and talk about how horrible our hometown team is going to be. But we pretty much predicted this all the way from the very beginning, even when the Rockies were above 500, that they were going to slip. And it's just, it's tough. When you lose people like LeMayhew, uh, Arenado, and then, of course, Trevor Story. Trevor Story. You, you, you've lost three all-star infielders. Um, that's one-third of your offense. And it's just hard to bounce back from that. The Rockies right now are currently 25 and 33. They're in last place. They're 12 games out. The way the NL, the NL West plays out is LA is number one. Of course, we knew that was going to be the case. The Padres are one game out, 36 and 22, followed by the Giants, which are five games out, five and a half games out, and the D-Bags. I'm sorry. The Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks. <laughs> Please call them the D-Bags. They are at 10 games out and two games in front of us. So really, you're going to see the haves and the have-nots in the, in the NL, uh, NL West, whereas really the team we're competing with is uh, the Diamondbacks to stay out of last place. Yeah, and I think the big thing here, you can see it on paper. Uh, the number one, two, even, I'll even give credit a little bit to the Giants. Teams are willing to spend money, and you know, the Rockies are not. And we, anytime we get a player that we could really build around, they're shipped off to the New York Yankees, the LA Dodgers, to the people that will actually pay them. And you can't blame them for that. But unless our owner decides to spend money, we're gonna be in last place the whole time. The Monfort family has decided that they want to put a, a team out there for entertainment purposes, not for winning. Mm -hmm. So basically, we are stuck here in Colorado, and I hate to use this as a euphemism, but basically, it'd be the same thing as if, if the Nuggets decided to be the Harlem Globetrotters, mm -hmm. and everything was an exhibition. Because our guys, our, our team, along with the Pirates, and there's a couple other uh, franchises, they really effectively become quad A franchise, you know, farm teams yep. for the rest of the halves, the people willing to spend the money. Again, baseball, there is no salary cap. So it is as true and pure, basically, as the market drives and as the TV contracts pay. So you see Boston, you see the New York Yankees, you see the LA Dodgers, all big market teams that have incredible TV revenue coming in that can pay their team. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we get to playoffs, I always, if there's every, pretty much every year, there's at least one team that is a small market team where you could take their whole roster that may be paid for one New York Yankee. And I always get behind them. I hope they can pull off the upset. Most of the times they don't, but every once. I mean, you have the Oakland A's that yep. rolled money around and uh, had that money ball. You yeah. know, they, Billy Bean really did try to do something, and, and it was successful. It's still a pretty successful uh, model, but it, it's just when you have a pitching roster, okay, that like the LA Dodgers, they pay more for their pitching roster than we pay for our entire franchise team. Mm -hmm. And how do you compete against that? You can't. You, you just can't. And you can't expect our guys, you know, I don't fault Story or Arenado, or maybe more Arenado because he had the contract in place, but they want to play for a winner. They want to play for a team that's going to invest and get into the postseason. Mm -hmm. And you can't help them for wanting to do that. And also, too, they get paid more money, although Story was 
the Rockies were going to pay story, story more than the Red Sox. And it, we're seeing Trevor struggle a lot with the Red Sox right now. Again, people will say it's because he's playing at sea level. I just think he's having a rough, team, a rough year. Yeah, I yeah. like how he got called out, though. He got called out, uh, it had to be a couple weeks ago that he's been struggling. And I think he ended up jacking multiple home, ru home runs that game. Yeah. And so, I mean, he has his flashes, but really the Rockies are an audition. It's an audition to get to the Yankees or anything else. And yeah. I mean, it's sad to say because yeah. it is a professional team, but we're basically an addition to get to a better team. Yeah. And that is. That's why we, instead of calling it a triple-A team, we call it a quad-A team. Mm -hmm. It's like the Pirates. Well, excellent. Well, we are in the mezzanine section here at Brothers Bar and Grill in the shops of Northfield. Seth, what do we got going on this week here as far as drink specials or any other things you've got going on? Yes, yeah, so we got Johnny Vegas uh, shots up for five bucks. We have the watermelon pitcher. It's a refreshing Long Island pitcher that you can drink on these hot days like we have today. Exactly. Uh, we have the UFC coming on tonight along with uh, game six of the Rangers in Tampa Bay. And then Jurassic Park was just released the, yesterday here at the Harkins Theater. So if you're going to buy a ticket, buy it ahead of time. Come in for a couple beers and, you know, go enjoy the movie. They just redid the seats, so it's a pretty fun place to be. Yeah, especially on a hot day like today, being in a movie theater sounds really, really good about this moment. And there's a policeman expo that's going on right now outside. Um, so I see a lot of kids out there getting a chance to see what the inside of cop cars look like, um, maybe for their future. Yeah, and they, they also have uh, they also have their like surveillance vans and things like that. Fire trucks are out there. It's a safety expo. You can go out and see uh, real life uh, what what uh, firefighters and police officers use, uh, especially in uh, hazardous situations. So it, it's just a really good education to the public. Uh, that goes on until two o'clock today, and. Yeah, we'll be having all the games on today. We have the package, so I know baseball will kick off here in a little bit. Uh, hockey comes on at 6, and then UFC leads us into tonight and goes until about 11 o'clock. Yeah, and all kidding aside, uh, we want to definitely celebrate our first responders, our policemen, our firemen, and our EMTs out there, and a lot of them are being showcased. So if you aren't doing anything right now and you want to come down for a couple hours, go over, check out the... Uh, the uh, Policeman's Expo and the Fireman's Expo, and then come on in into Brothers and get a cold beer. Yeah, it's right outside our door. So uh, they'll be here till two o'clock. You go out the Brothers door, front door, you'll be right in the Expo. So make sure you stop on in, check it out. And you know, just try to stay cool today. Absolutely, 98 degrees, make sure you hydrate. Um, and be safe out there. Anything else that's going on around sports that you you, you know maybe just uh, triggered your your interest this week? Yeah, in about uh, two weeks, I believe. What are we on the tenth? I believe it is the twenty fifth. Twelfth. Uh, Eleventh today. The Eleventh today. So in two weeks, exactly. Uh, the USA women's team is coming to Dick's Sporting Field. Hey, so good thing. Do you get a chance to watch the USA women? Uh, luckily, we have a soccer. Great, yep. USA Women's Soccer. We get a great facility here that we get picked for a couple national games. Uh, I know USA Rugby has come here a couple times. I believe they ironically played Russia when they came here. Uh, sometimes they get the bigger stadium down at the Broncos, but we have a great park where any seat, so if you're looking at tickets, any seat's a good seat. There's not a bad seat in the house over at Dick's Sporting Good Field. It really is a great venue. Now next week we're going to talk a little bit more about science, and uh, we have an article in here. Are we being visited by aliens? Now, I know this is a topic that's, you know, we'll find out what Seth's uh, opinions are on this, but uh, there's a lot of things going on, and, you know, even our government itself is starting to look into the UFO phenomenon. Yep. So we'll talk a little bit about that next week as well. We'll also have full coverage of the NBA, uh, the finals. Like I said, we've got a three-game tournament left, and hopefully, either on Thursday, um, if Tampa Bay can close them out. We'll see our first game one of the Stanley Cup on Thursday night. Yeah. Right yeah. here in Denver. What what game are you going to? Do you have I'm to going to game one? one. Oh, so you're going to be there either Thursday or Saturday. Yep. And so we're going to see how it plays out. You know, the Rangers, I hope you can take it to game seven. You've had a great run. I think right. you deserve to play at least uh, two more games. But you know what? It's looking like the back-to-back -back champs are going to be visiting us. And they're going now. This next game is it in New it's York? It's in Tampa. It's in Tampa. So see, it's going to be even tough. They have to go down to their own home ice down there and try to, or to Tampa's home ice to try to win. One thing they were talking about. Tell them a little bit about the the uh, prices for the uh, 
the Stanley Cup if the Rangers win it. Yeah, if the Rangers were to go to the Cup, their tickets are going to be five times, if not ten times more than what you would pay to go to an Avalanche game. Uh, they're talking of going into the thousands of dollars, ten thousand dollars for a ticket. Ten thousand dollars for a, sh- uh, a seat in Madison Square Garden. And, I mean... For two for, hours. For the Rangers, they haven't been there in a long time, I understand it. New York has a... They seem to have a lot of money, so maybe, yeah, you know, maybe they'll, they'll they'll definitely sell it out one way or another. Oh yeah, but it's not, not on the primary market, on the secondary market. But to put that in perspective for us, right now it looks like the ads are averaging maybe a thousand dollar ticket to three thousand for game one, and then it raises as it goes on. So game two will probably be fifteen hundred to four thousand, and then when we get to an elimination game, looking at game five, game seven, we're probably looking at minimum. Three to four grand for one ticket. So your difference from the upper bowl right now is about one thousand versus three thousand for the lower bowl. Yep. Okay, so that gives you guys kind of an idea. Hopefully, you've saved your money. You know, go go find your piggy bank and break it, because this could be a once well, it, it has been a once in a generation thing for the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, in two thousand one, when I was here, it was incredible. The city really got behind the Avalanche and uh, going to the bars and the sports bars. And I'm telling you, folks, go come to Brothers. Watch at least one or two of these games down here because when you're around the other fellow fans, it is just electric. Yeah, it makes a great environment to watch hockey. Absolutely. It's a great, great uh, environment to drink and eat the food that we have here at Brothers Bar and Grill. And if you don't watch a lot of hockey, don't worry. I'll be here. I'll explain the whole thing to you. We'll, we'll go right from there. But <laughs> exactly. just having your presence here to support the team is just a good showing for Colorado. Absolutely. And this is a hockey bar, mm-hmm. okay? We, we, um, we have lots of hockey fans that come in here. So you'll be amongst other hockey fans. So feel free to come down. Again, we are located at the shops of Northfield, just north of I-70. Anything else you want to add? No, we got a lot of cool events coming. It looks like a couple of the beer fests have gone around uh, the Central Park area. We also have uh, farmer markets popping up. There was just an art festival last week. So the city is really putting a lot on right now, and it's all real close to Brothers. So make sure if you go visiting those, make sure you stop by, check out Brothers if you haven't been here. Or if you have, come on back. Just get a beer, cool off, and then go about your day. Absolutely. Uh, It's so great that COVID is over with now and we're starting to see all of our festivals come back. Colorado is just a great city for concerts, sporting events, and all these little festivals that you can find all over the place. All right, folks, well, hey, we would like you to uh, remember and thank the people from LinkedIn for tuning in. We've got such a nice following there. Also, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Getter, and Rumble. So look for us, share it with your friends. Remember, it's called the Dr. Jimbo Love Show featuring my main man, Seth Matthew, right over here. We'll be back next week at 11 o'clock. We'll be here to cover, like we talked about, the NHL, the NBA, and a a host of other things. And we'll be talking a little bit about the U.S. Open. Remember, folks, if you're a golf fan, get out there and start watching the U.S. Open. It's probably one of the best tournaments that you'll see. It's one of my favorite majors, only because anybody can be eligible to play in it. Yeah, and it's always fun to see those guys that, like, Obviously, you know you're probably the top 25 golfers, but to get somebody in the no name, there's always somebody that comes out of the woodwork and makes a run at the tournament and is alive on game one, day one, maybe even day two. And you know they'll probably fall off after that. Yep. But it is just fun to watch all these newer golfers that you don't get to see on a daily basis. Absolutely, and you know if you guys are in a state that pays, you know go on to FanDuel or DraftKings, pick yourself a foursome of people. Put down two or three dollars for them to win, place, or make the cut and make a little bit of money. You know, I I was lucky enough to to put down three dollars on Justin Thomas. He ended up having that seven stroke comeback in the PGA Championship. I won eighty four dollars on a three dollar bet. You know, it's it makes it look a lot of fun. And we did a show back and Seth is the one who convinced me to get onto these betting ads and, and, and you know what? It's absolutely when you have skin in the game it's absolutely more fun to watch. Yeah, it makes it a little bit more exciting because at the end of the day, you might make 50 bucks off your bet, uh, and it keeps you around till the end as long as your guy's still in it. So absolutely, you it, know, it's just super fun. I mean, Seth has a limit. He he, he sets like either 10 or 20 dollars. I do the same. Mine's 10 dollars, 
And you can break $10 down a lot of different ways and, and, and uh, look at these parlays and make a little bit of extra spending cash that you can come down to Brothers and spend here on our great food and great drinks. Yeah. All right, folks, we want to thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Remember, get out there and earn it. See you, everybody.